Welcome to the Better Human Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Stucker. Today's show is five-ish minutes on something actionable to help you become a better human. Life's about the journey, not the destination. Although the destination is the grave. So if that's where you're trying to go as fast as possible or as comfortable as possible, well, you're going to get there. <laughs> and time's going to pass you very fast. So the question is, are you actualizing? Are you taking action? Are you doing things that matter to you? Are you making the world a better place? Are you making yourself a better place? Today's idea, topic, is what's the measure of a life? This is a quote from a book that I'm reading, uh, Pursuit of Wonder, it's a YouTube channel. I think it's called Notes from the Edge of Everything or something. I don't know, it's really good, but it's from a guy that got diagnosed with a brain tumor, had a short period of time to live, and he had always been a writer, so he had all these notes he was writing during that time when he basically knew his demise was imminent. Even though our demise is imminent for all of us, we just don't know when. So this is a quote from the book. No matter how long one lives, one always perceives their life's length against their expectations of its length. Not any objective measurement. And thus one's length of life is not even a viable objective measurement of one's experience of it. A greater length does not imply greater depth. If a person had the option to live 15 years of immense vigor and luster or 100 years of suffering tedium, wouldn't the fairly obvious choice be the 15 good years over the 100 bad. In truth, someone dying earlier than expected could be just as sad as somebody dying as expected, but living an arduous, horrible life. So let's go back to the first part of the quote. So no matter how long one lives, we perceive the length of our life against our expectations of its length. So against how long we think we should have lived. Maybe we have this subconscious idea that we're going to live to be like late 60s and life cuts us off at 30 and it's like, oh shit. There's no objective measurement here. And he's also going into talking about the quality of life versus the length of life. He's saying that quality trumps quantity. It's better to live fully for a short period of time versus not fully or discontented or miserable or depressed for longer periods of time, right? That's it's obvious when you mention it, but it's not so obvious in how many people live their day-to-day lives. They don't consider it. They think the goal is just like wake up every day, not cause too much of a ruckus, not take too many risks, not do things that are going to bring ire your way and then just go to sleep and do it again. And then eventually you die. So I've been continually trying to refine the idea of what the show's about, what my content is about, what I want to talk about. And better human... What does that mean, right? Because better is vague. I mean, even for some people, human is vague. It's like better human, okay. Like, is that some elitist thing about building better humans, an army of dominant humans? For me, it's about bettering ourselves. Every day I wake up, I want to become better. I want to make the world around me better. I want to build something, create something. I want to leave people better than when I found them. And then over my entire life, that theme of betterment will leave behind something that has had a ripple effect on the universe while also pursuing the mastery and the struggle and the good times and the bad times and everything that comes with that actualizing journey. Because again, as they say, you know, the Chinese said a long time ago, it's about the journey, not the destination. Life is a journey, right? Every part of it is a journey. Every moment on your journey is you living your journey, right? Like that's what life is. Life is moments. There's no future. There's no past. They don't exist. The now is the only thing you have. But we live in the future or the past. We have self-inflicted suffering because we don't pay attention to the moment. We're always on, and again, not saying I'm good at this. Like, this is what I struggle with. I'm constantly focused on not next thing. I want to be in the moment. I want to not worry about this thing or do that thing. I don't want to be so obsessively focused about what I'm going to get, what's next, goals, etc. I need to balance having those goals and doing things and building things with focusing on the present. I mean, the reality is like building something, creating something and acquiring a future and working towards a future is manifested through the now. It's literally what I'm doing right now. And every moment of the day is that thing, right? Every moment of the day, I'm growing something, investing in something, you know, plans are coming to fruition. Things are adding exponentially more value and growth to it and blah, blah, blah. But the hard thing about our species 
is that our biology is designed to always be yearning, always wanting, always needing to get something else, something new, something more, some different area. The grass is greener, more food, more sex, more this, more that, more resources. Because that was what you needed to do to become the dominant apex predator on planet Earth, which is what humans are. Then we get thrust into this modern environment where everything's backwards, where you actually don't need to always be getting more and more and more and more. And if you do pursue more and more and more and more in our modern environment, it always comes with consequences, side effects, right? Eat too much food, we know what happens. Watch too much porn, negative side effects. Too much sex, negative side effects. Or having trouble appreciating what you do have or keeping a stable relationship, etc. More money, give up time, give up health, give up family time, etc. We know that more is a sickness, yet as humans, we engage in it daily. We pursue it daily. It's a hard thing. It's very hard. It's a lot of what I've been talking about, thinking about for years. You know, from the ancestral perspective, it's this idea that we have to first understand our biology. Why do we have these urges to always want this, that, grass is greener? Why do we pursue that? Even when we know at the forefront of our brain, like if we think about it logically, it's a hollow pursuit. It's uh, dangerous. It's, it's probably even bad for us and our happiness and our fulfillment. Yet we still do it because those primal urges are so strong. And if you don't invest a lot of upfront at the forefront energy to control your subconscious urges through conscious effort, through strategies, plans, understanding your biology, studying, reading, writing, journaling, meditating, you know, everything that you need to do that's a lot of shit, requires a lot of knowledge and a lot of effort and a lot of learning, that is the human experience. Without all that, your biology is going to just run amok, basically, and do what it wants to do. And you're going to just be pulled along. And the thing is, the ego that's pulling you along and that's just pursuing these primal base urges, the front of your, you, you could say your frontal lobe or the conscious part of your person is the one that has to suffer when the ego pulls you into shit. <laughs> they say the analogy is it's that we're the small rider on the elephant. And this big elephant is like just pulling us around. It's the... The big elephant of urges, this huge monstrous ton thing that is just pulling us in different directions. We are supposed to be the rider on the elephant. And if we are a good rider, if we tame our elephant, we can direct that to go where we want. But most people don't do that. Most people are literally a rider on an elephant. And that little rider, you imagine a little guy or gal on the top of the elephant is blindfolded. That's the way it is. That's a perfect metaphor for the majority of modern humans. So we've gone over a few minutes, but this is a very big idea. The measure of a life, in my opinion, is about how you lived, how you experienced, how you took advantage of the moments. And really fundamentally, the measure of your life is what have you given your attention to? What have you given your attention to? That's what life is. Life is a series of attentions. Are you spending time with your family and you have the most precious, amazing things that you care about more than anything right in front of you, yet you're constantly on your phone or text messages or notifications or whatever, are you living moments distracted because you're obsessing over the past or the future? Maybe you're stuck in the past and you're beating yourself up about it or you're fearful of the future, what may or may not happen and you're trying to mitigate everything and plan for everything. Like, it's no easy thing here. Like, I'm not suggesting any of this is easy. It requires a holistic approach to life. Like I said, you got to really do a lot of shit and you have to understand a lot of things and you have to become self-aware and you have to continually work on yourself. Like, it's hard. It's really freaking hard. I guess the thing that pains me the most about it is that the people, like if you're listening to this right now and you've stuck along for this whole nine minutes, right? I congratulate you, but it's very likely you're a growth-minded person. Those that are the fixed mind either haven't found this video at all because they're watching, you know, cat videos or, I mean, you know, of course, YouTube algorithm probably doesn't show it up to them or whatever. And that's a whole other topic. But if you can sit here patiently listening to, some random person on the internet ramble on about something because certain keywords appeal to you because you're growth minded, you want to grow, you know, et cetera, right? Like it's very likely that you are then in this unique bucket as a person like that. The rest of everyone else that isn't seeking out personal development type videos or channels, it's just not going to be exposed to these ideas. They're going to have no wherewithal of it or knowledge of it or ideas of it whatsoever. And that's, that's what kills me the most is the idea that 
the best ideas, the first principles, the truth to most things in life, whether that is like nutrition, whether that is money and fiat and debt and the broken political system, like the truth to everything, as some some call it red pilled, being red pilled, or black pilled or orange pilled or whatever. The majority of people will go through their entire lives having no idea any of these things. And they will just buy into lies fed to them by communities, governments, people, whatever, right? Generally, it's whatever the majority of people believe is what the majority of people will believe. And that's tragic because you ha- you will get, quite literally, billions of people living lives of quiet desperation, the way Thoreau said, and he said this in the 1800s, the mass of men live lives of quiet desperation. The second part of it, but it's like going to their grave basically with their song still inside them, going to their grave with their song still inside them, going to their grave without actualizing, reaching their potential, or giving their gifts to humanity. And that's tragic. Get all the shows over at Colin.coach. Subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your favorite podcasts and video content. And I'll see you in the next one.